Hey guys, it's Holly, and today we'll be having a look at the first of the retail exclusives for 2021 from LEGO Harry Potter. Starting off with, I guess, arguably probably the most popular and I guess exciting one out of that, and that is the Hogwarts Wizards Chess Set. Now this is set 76392 and retails for 110 Australian dollars and 60 US dollars. And this set actually has 876 pieces and is essentially exactly what you think it is. It is a playable chess board, which I'm kind of surprised that they did, but I'm also kind of surprised that it's taken this long for LEGO to make a set like this. Now, funnily enough, this is actually the only Harry Potter set that has sold out currently in Australia. I'm kind of shocked at that and to see how much demand there really is for this, because I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's, it's just a chess board. What's the point in it? But I also feel like there are a lot of people who are like, yes, it's just a chess board. So I feel like it's kind of an iffy one in that regard. Now this one as well, because it is a 20th anniversary set, does come with a golden Snape and three of the brand new chocolate frog cards. And to be completely honest, I don't know how to review this set, considering the fact that it is just a chess board. So I guess we'll start off with the minifigures and then take a look at each individual chess piece. And then lastly, the board itself. So let's have a look at those minifigures first up. First up, of course, we have Harry Potter, and this is such a well-desired figure. I have wanted this version of Harry for years. It's such an iconic outfit and features the entirety of the end of the Philosopher's Stone slash Sorcerer's Stone. It's the outfit that he fights Quirrell in, so it's really great to see this finally appearing, and I think his jumper print looks amazing. I love the detail on it and the fact that he's got the rips too. It looks incredible. I love the torso print so much. It's just, it's amazing. Of course, some arm printing would have made it a bit better, but I really don't think that this figure needs it. The one thing that I do wish they did though was give him a new face, make him look a bit more scuffed up. I mean, they've been fighting Fluffy and Devil's Snare and a bunch of winged keys after all. At this point, he's bound to have a few scratches on his face, just like he does at the very end of the film. But, I mean, Lego's trying to keep costs down by reusing parts. I do understand that, so I guess it's alright, but in that case, you're just getting the same usual Harry Potter face that we know and love at this point. Next up is the true hero of this scene, Ron Weasley, and he comes in his check shirt. Once again, a very, very popular outfit that I know I've wanted personally for a very long time. Just the trio in these outfits, they've been sought after. Like, these are well-loved figures. Once again, I feel like arm printing would have been nice, but again, for Ron, I really don't think it matters that much. And just like Harry, he's got the same young face that we know and love. But for some reason, I feel like this version of Ron has really big white pupils. I don't know what's going on recently with the Ron Weasley face printing in that regard. He does look kind of a bit funky compared to Harry and Hermione, but it's nothing I'm really going to complain to customer service about. And lastly, we have Hermione Granger. And I remember when I first saw this figure, I kind of thought that the jumper should have been red. Upon closely looking at it, I do see why Lego ended up going with dark green. But for Hermione in particular, and I know I've brought this up with the rest of the characters, but I really feel like Hermione needed arm printing here. There is so much detailing on her sweater that it just, it, I really feel like it should have been carried over to the arms. And it's such a shame to see that it's not, especially with outfits like this. I also feel like some dual molded legs would have been really good in this case, since Hermione is wearing a skirt, even if it was just half grey, kind of half tan or black. I know she had stockings on in this scene, but just something would have been a bit nicer than just kind of the grey legs and the green arms. Like, it doesn't quite completely look like her outfit, but at the same time, you can get the general gist of it, I guess, just by the printing. And then once again, just like Ron and Harry, she has the same classic young face here. And our last figure for this set is the 20th anniversary Severus Snape. And once again, he he has the same kind of design as the rest of the golden figures with the sparkly torso and the 20 years on the back. And Snape, for some reason, I feel like just doesn't quite work very well in gold. I don't know if it's his face prune or just the fact that they did the Hogwarts moment Snape where he doesn't have the coattails piece. I get that that means they didn't, don't have to print on the legs. But to me personally, I think of that Severus Snape when I think of the Snape minifigure, not this brand new one who's only really been around for six months at this point. But besides that, he's just kind of the same as the rest of them. Again, I wish they had special bases rather than minifigure stands. 
but I mean at least he matches the remaining of the figures. To celebrate the 20th anniversary as well, just like a lot of the other sets, you do get the chocolate frog cards and this set, just like Hogsmeade and the Chamber of Secrets, unfortunately they are all in different bags so you could potentially get duplicates again. And speaking of duplicates, if you've watched any of my other Harry Potter reviews, you would know that unfortunately I've already got all three of these chocolate frog cards. I've now got four Nicholas Flumels, three Ollivanders and three Dumbledores, which is a real shame. I'm gonna have to sell some of these on Bricklink because unfortunately I don't know anyone that I can personally go and trade these with. So that's quite painful, but I do love the design of these. I think they're really good. It's just, yeah, it's a pain that you could potentially get three of the same in this set. So here is the chessboard as a whole, and as you would expect with something like this, it is very, very repetitive. I built this on stream, and you have to repeat so many, many, many steps that it is kind of, to be completely honest, kind of mind-numbing. I feel like if I was watching The Philosopher's Stone or literally any TV show or a video or listening to music, this probably wouldn't be as bad as you have something to kind of distract yourself, but even then you do really have to kind of pay attention to all the little steps with all the little bits and pieces and things like that, that it's maybe not so much of a good idea to have that on while you're kind of building this set. But overall, for what it is, I think it does look really good. But the problem is, build-wise, it is pretty boring. And at the end of the day, you are getting a chessboard, which I guess value-wise, it's a lot cheaper just to buy yourself a chessboard. So the real kind of draw to this is the figures. And for someone like myself who doesn't really know how to play chess, it's not like I'm going to really get a lot of use out of it. In fact, I do actually want to learn how to play chess so that I can use this. But just as kind of an aesthetic build, I think it looks really nice. So let's take a closer look at it and have a look at all of these individual pieces. So in order to show you the chess pieces, just so that you get kind of the best contrast, we're going to take a look closely at all of the black pieces. And then I will quickly show you the white ones because the builds to them are fundamentally the same, but I just want you to be able to properly see each of the pieces. So first up, we have the pawn and there are, of course, eight of these in this set. And he looks really cute and probably one of the most accurate, I think, out of all of these. Although it is a shame because of kind of the way Lego works, his swords have to be facing up rather than kind of cross down into the sides of him like you see unless he's kind of in his battle pose here. Now the pieces used, a lot of them are kind of curved. They've all got these kind of little bases here. And then for the hats on the pawns in particular, it is a recoloring in black and white of the Underminers kind of helmet from the Incredibles Junior sets. And then they've got these black and white old style kind kind of swords here, but considering the size, I really think that they got this piece pretty, pretty close actually. And then here is that same pawn in white, and as you can see, the build is exactly the same here. Next up, we have the Rook, which has one of these really nice medieval helmets on. And again, you get that same sword, as well as a Nexo Knight shield piece to protect themselves in this case, because of the whole like wizard chest design. Besides that, I really like the shape of this once again, using a lot of different curve pieces, a little base as well. And then of course, you've got the minifigure heads to kind of hold it all together. And again, I really like the design of these and I think Lego's done a great job in terms of the scale they're going for here. And then here is the Rook in white. Once again, I don't want to say it a thousand times, but it's exactly the same as the black version. Next up, we have the Knight. And I don't think I can say that this is exactly as well built as some of the other ones. I kind of get why this looks like a horse, but at the same time, I don't particularly see it very well. And then you've got the little Knight at the top and his sword. But the big thing with the knight pieces is, is, is Ron actually able to jump on the back of the horse? And unfortunately, it's not as easy as it seems. A lot of the pieces are kind of connected, and I know you see it kind of beaten up on the box front, but it's really not kind of as easy to do that as you'd probably expect. You can do it, and I will show you what that looks like in a second, but it's not the most simple thing in the world. But otherwise, this piece is pretty good. I just wish there could have been a tiny bit more they could have done with the horse, but I, I get why. Like, it's on a very, very small scale here. So as you can see, Ron fits on the back, although the scale is just a tiny bit off, especially because of the fact he kind of has to lean to one side of this horse since this horse is only one stud thick. He looks kind of funky, 
but I mean, at least you can do it. And it is kind of simple to do. All you need to do is take off the side panels where this sword is and this curved bit is here. And then you can pop the entire head and kind of modified brick on the center there. And you get this kind of little night head that can lie around and you can stick Ron on the top if you want, which personally, if I can find space to display this, is how I'm personally going to do it, just to make it look like the scene itself. Then here is the white piece and the only difference here is that that stud there is light bluish gray instead of dark bluish gray. And unfortunately for the white horse's case, they do use that same black piece underneath. So you can kind of see bits of the black, especially at the bottom and even on the sides up here. I wish they'd just done a white recolor. It would have made it look a lot more cleaner in this case. Moving on over and we have the bishop, which once again has that same kind of medieval helmet here and stands a lot taller using more curved pieces as well as some one by three tiles on the front and back to give him a really clean look. He's also got a little hand sticking out holding this rod, which reuses the black kind of Indiana Jones whips from back in the day. And then once again, just like the knight, you have that dark bluish gray stud to kind of connect them all. I guess it kind of gives them a bit of an accent in the end, but that's about it. And just kind of like the rest of them, scale looks really good for what they're trying to achieve here. And here is our white bishop, which once again uses that light bluish gray stud instead of the dark bluish gray one. Next up, we have the queen. And to be completely honest, I didn't actually realize this was supposed to be the queen when building it. I really had to kind of look at the box and I was like, oh, okay, that's supposed to be the queen. And kind of looking a bit closer at it, I can see kind of what they're going for now with this rod in the middle and having these kind of curved pieces. It's supposed to be her hands and this is supposed to be her sword. I kind of see it, but at the same time, I don't think it really works. Especially in this case, I would have loved to see a different type of helmet used because the fact that she did have such a really defined kind of armor, whereas here it's just a minifigure head with a flat tile on the top, it doesn't really feel quite as queen-like for me because I, when I really think of this scene, the one that stands out to me besides the knight is the queen because of that whole close up at the end of the film. So it's kind of unfortunate to see that they didn't give her some sort of helmet. But I think at the end of the day, that mostly comes down to the fact that they didn't want to do a new mold. Same deal with the queen here, same kind of cosmetic issues, which is a shame because she's the one who gets the close up. And lastly, we have the king, which has some really fantastic shoulder pads there using those triangular one by one pieces. And he is holding the same sword as Godric Gryffindor from the Micro Skull Hogwarts, this time in black in front of his body, which looks kind of a bit funky because you've got a clip holding it rather than his hands. But I get it, this is a, this is a very tiny scale. And unlike the queen, he actually does have the helmet, which looks so much better in my opinion. You can kind of see what I mean with the queen now looking at him. And lastly, of course, we have our king in white, and those are all of our chess pieces in this set. And lastly, we have arguably the most boring part of this set, and that is the chessboard itself. Now, look, I'm really glad that they did put this black border around it with all of the little flames. Otherwise, I feel like this would just be very, very plain. And I've got mixed feelings about this chessboard. I'm glad that it's tiled off because I guess you can still kind of drag along all of the pieces as if you were playing. But at the same time, to me, as someone who's not really going to use it as a chessboard, is that I wish that there were jumper plates in the middle so you could actually stick down all of the pieces. Now in doing that, that would have made it have more of a piece count because you'd kind of have that two by two jumper in the middle, then a one by four, a two by two, a one by four, and a two by two, which would drastically increase kind of the price of this set, which is why I kind of think that they did end up tiling everything off. I think it was just cheaper and easier for them to do. So I kind of get it, but I found that these chess pieces just slide all over the place. I guess I could modify it and get a bunch of pieces and do it. It would be very simple to do so, or even blue tack them, but I feel like that's probably not the greatest idea ever. But besides that, the build of the chessboard is pretty simple. These tiles are painfully, painfully boring to do. I will say that. And then kind of the way the chessboard is built up is using a bunch of beautiful colored pieces. Of course, you've got these little gray feet here. A lot of kind of reinforcements using these wedge pieces and some plates to kind of keep it all the same height. You've also got these rubber wheels on the bottom here, which stop it from sliding around a bit. And as you can see, mine's kind of gotten a bit dirty and dusty from just moving this around a tiny bit. But this entire thing is built up pretty sturdy 
sturdy. Like if you were to push down on it, it is reinforced. Things aren't going to get knocked off, which I like, but it's also not overcrowded and super bulky at the bottom. And I really think that these rubber feet were a fantastic touch so that it kind of can slide around, but if you knock it, it's not really going to go very far, if you kind of get what I mean here. So that is the Wizard's Chess set. And look, I, I like this set. I really do. Even though I don't know how to play chess, I want to teach myself how to do it so that I can use this chessboard and really get some value out of it, which I feel like is kind of where I stand on this set. I think if you know how to play chess or you really enjoy chess and you're a big fan of Harry Potter, this is a fantastic set for you. And I really feel like the minifigures are an excellent draw here. They are fantastic with these amazing outfits that we've been waiting to have for years. But to me, I, it just, it doesn't feel like the value's completely there. Like I look at this set and I just think, like this was $110 for me. I really don't see the full value here. I get why it's that price. With the amount of pieces you have to build all of these chess figures, yeah, I get it. I, I, I see where the price kind of comes from, but the fact that because it is a chessboard, like the whole nature of this set kind of sets it up for failure, I think, in my opinion. The build's repetitive. It kind of looks very basic, and as someone who doesn't know how to play the game, it's not like I can particularly use it. Yeah, I will try and learn how to do it, but at the same time, I just don't think the value is fully there at full price. This is definitely a set that I would probably hold off on. Overall, I've got very conflicted opinions on it because on one hand, I'm like, it's just a chessboard. And then on the other hand, I'm like, wow, it's a chessboard. Um, so I feel like out of 10, I'd really have to rate this probably an eight and a half. I think it's a really solid set, but it's definitely not something for everyone. I can definitely see a lot of people just bricklinking the figures out of this one and probably just passing on it and saving some money and I can completely see why you would do that but I am glad that Lego did make this I think it's a very unique Lego Harry Potter set at that and I it's definitely like I said inspired me to try and learn how to play chess but let me know what you guys think about this set and if you plan on buying it and even just do you think it's worth the money and if you guys enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel down below and until next time guys I'll see you later